Hello, hello, hello. All right, people uh, starting to join. I'm going to allow you to talk because we're a smart group. So I want you guys to be able to introduce yourself and tell me where you're at and stuff like this. And then I can get y'all started in some self storage investing. So I appreciate you guys hopping on. Uh, can you guys introduce yourselves to me? Hey, Stacey, it's Chris Clear. Okay. Where are you at? Tell me about yourself. I uh, live in Tennessee, um, own some storage facilities. I've got uh, one facility in Virginia, a couple in Tennessee, and uh, we do some other investing with some uh, different types of real estate as well. Oh, okay, good. Awesome. Okay, so you've been, how long have you been doing, uh, how long have you been owning uh, storage facilities for? I uh, started three years ago. Okay. It's, uh, it's been fun. Okay, so that's cool. All right, so and then what about you, uh, Terry? Tell me about yourself. I'm a newbie, so I'm just now learning. Trying to get into the game? Yep, that's why I came to this one called Self Storage 101. Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. Okay, so Chris, tell me a little bit about like how you find your deals, because I teach people how to find deals through uh, driving for storage. What, how do you find your deals? Are they online or are they just to the owner? No, it's more of networking. That's uh, primarily what I do more than anything. Um, I live in the area and uh, I own some other businesses and and uh, one of my companies, um, I have some partners in it, but we do credit card processing and we work with banks and credit unions. And so, as you can imagine, I have quite a few uh, facilities that are clients of mine and, uh, and even those that aren't clients. Um, I, I've found sometimes nothing beats just stopping by and, and uh, getting to know someone. And so that's been uh, my experience. Um, We've had some recently sell in my area that were listed with brokers. And um, I would have been, I would love to have been in in the, the conversation before it went to the broker. Yeah. Um, but once it went there and you know, an extra half million got added to the sale price, it became uh, a little cost prohibitive for me. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's, what I, that's what I was going to bring up. So essentially just for you, Terry, so what I do to find storage facilities is I go directly to the owner. And the way that I do that is I actually, so I look, um, we look on Google Maps. And so what we'll do is we'll just like, so for instance, let me just show you. <clears throat> if we go to Google Maps, and then we'll just do like where I'm at is in a store. I'm at, I'm on an Long Island right now, but um, if I do storage near me on Google Maps, then that's kind of like for me personally, that's my starting point. So then you can see like all these storage facilities are here near me. Now, of course, we're on Long Island, so obviously there's going to be a lot of like big names and stuff like this. But my job is to find storage facilities that are either on Google Maps and they have like horrible reviews. This is what I'll do is I'll look through here and I'll be like, okay, which one of these has like horrible reviews? There's, they all have like four or five stars. So there's really no like this one here, prime storage is three and a half or whatever. So that's probably the worst one. But um, other than that, like everything's looking pretty good. So Google reviews, I would look at. And then also um, I look at whether or not they have a, a, a website. If they have a website, then, um, then, you know, then obviously they kind of sort of know what they're doing. If they don't have a website, that means they probably don't know what they're doing. So here's this one, Fifth Avenue Storage, and the website's not here. So whoever's managing this facility here, now this is in New York, obviously, but whoever's managing this facility has not finished filling out their Google business listings properly, right? So either they're not being managed properly or, um, you know, the person that's doing this just has no idea what they're doing. Now, where I'm in Long Island, so obviously this is a primary market. And of course, everything here is going to be like super expensive. And all the old storage facilities that were here, you know, back in the day, they've all been bought up and only, I mean, literally on Long Island, there's just like big boxes, right? So this is like not the best place to really be looking for storage. It's going to be way too expensive. Anywhere on Long Island, this could be way expensive unless you want to go like maybe way out here. I'm not sure. Let's see. Search this area. 
but I use Google Maps a lot. See, look, even out way out here, live storage and U-Haul are all still way out here. So even though this is like super far away from the city. Now we just spent like on Saturday, I do what's called infill training day with my students. And we spent the entire Saturday driving around and driving for storage. And we were over, let me see if I can find where was I? Okay, here I was. I was over in um, this area right here. Yeah. So this is where I was. And um, let's see if I can find it. And I was in, yeah, I was right in this, I was right in this area. So this square right here, which is like the 209 to the 33 to the, 22 to the whatever this is the 309 or whatever this one is this is like we were in this kind of area we spent a little bit of time a little bit of time here in easton and then we just kind of drove around and looked for storage because we were looking for um we were looking for secondary to tertiary markets right so obviously if you're in the northeast most of the area that you're going to be in is primary. So the question is, where is the secondary to tertiary markets? And when you're in the Northeast, it's kind of hard to find, right? So we were driving around and, um, and what we did is like, I'll just say search this area right here. And um, you see, like, once you start searching into this area, you'll know, and if I, once you zoom in, you'll find more and more storage facilities. But the truth of the matter is, is like this area, this like big square area, there's really not a, a lot, a lot of storage facilities. And so we kind of just drove around to all the ones that we could find um, that did not, that looked like, uh, you know, looked small, like they were smaller facilities or they had bad reviews. Like as you can see here, load and lock self-storage has three and, a half, three and a half stars. It does have a website. I mean, it's all filled out. It's all on, um, you know, it's all on, um, you know, Google business listings. It's right here is where it's at. And so I said, you know, let's just drive by and take a look at it. I mean, it's a really nice facility right and it's a bigger facility and uh you know and then we just we kind of put it on the list to take a look at it and see what's going on because somebody's not managing this property properly right and so we do i do what's called like virtual uh storage uh drive like virtual driving for storage where i'll just come in and uh virtually i'll kind of take a look at what the facility looks like so obviously i think this looks like you come in the back and then it's right so this is it right here the load and lock so this one might actually be something that you know i would be interested in i would like to drive in there and just take a look at it you know i don't know if you'll be able to see it from the road sometimes you can just see them from the road yeah, here yeah see here's this load and lock self-storage is what it is you can't really see it here but um, if you can see it, it helps a lot. But um, you can't see it from like that. But essentially, it looks like it's down in here, and it looks like there's some parking, and then there's some some uh, some storage here. So we drove by and I took a look at it. And I mean, and the only reason we took a look at it, and we'll try to get a hold of the owner, is because it is like it does have kind of bad reviews, you know. So maybe the owner just ain't into it. You know what I'm saying? They're just not into managing it anymore. And after a while, sometimes the owners are just not, they're just really not into it. And um, and so we did that one. Let's see what else did we do. Um, here's this keep it here storage only has one star and it does not have a website, you see. So this one is definitely something that you would want to have on your list. Let's see if we can find this one. Where is it? Okay, so here's keep it here storage. And so. So oh, this is like kind of if you zoom out, we can kind of see where it's at. And so yeah, once we um I don't know if we drove past this one or not. Oh, this was like kind of far north. We did not make it all the way up there. We ran out of time. But yeah, see, this one has one star. And this would be like the perfect one. And look at the pictures are not even correct. Look at the pictures. This is one of the pictures, and like the pictures of a gas station, right? So obviously, whoever's managing this one is not doing a good job. So this would be like the perfect storage facility to call up the owner and talk to them and see if they want to sell. 
So, um, so basically that's kind of how we look for our storage facilities. I call it driving, virtually driving for storage. And then a lot of times what we'll do is I'll drive, I'll drive and just take a look at, you know, the facilities I'll drive around and just see like, you know, if it's something that might be, you know, that we're interested in. So I'll really go and take a look at it. And if I can, now if I can't, like if it's a different area, you know, if it's like hours and hours away, then I just do this and I just call them up. And um, yeah, so here, oh yeah, we did go to this one. We did go to this one right here, 512. This is actually an older facility. And it's, I mean, it's a, it's a bigger facility, but it's older. And this, but this L&M uh, fabrication is owned by this, right? So this would be a good one to buy because, um, uh, it really was kind of an, you could tell it's kind of an older one. And even the building itself here was older. And actually he owns this whole, like this whole area right here. So essentially if, if you were going to buy this, I'm pretty sure you'd have to buy like all this, this whole property. But um, this was a really good one. Um, this was kind of an older one. Let's see if it's a picture. And see, it doesn't have really a lot of pictures or anything. It just has this. Yeah, see, that's the building right here. So it's a big manufacturing facility or whatever. And then he just happened to have some more property. So he was like, hey, let's go and just put some storage on, which actually is pretty smart. And, but yeah, so we went and drove by this one. And uh, let's see what else. And let's see what else did we drive by. And you'll notice too, sometimes you'll see like um, the, uh, the, um, like the, uh, the, the location of where the mat, the Google pin is for, for the, for the facility is going to be in the wrong area. So that's also a very good indication that it's just not being run properly. So that's kind of what we do. We drive, we virtually drive for storage and we look at the facilities by just sitting at our um, computer. And then we look at like, we look at the reviews. This is a four star review. And we try to find storage facilities that are just like not being managed properly. And then once we find those, and then also another thing too, is that we try to find storage facilities that um, are not on Google Maps because to get onto Google Maps is actually very, very difficult. Like to get onto, to get this dot here, I know you probably know this because you've done this before, but like essentially, it's essentially you have to go into Google business listings. You have to fill out all the Google business listing stuff. And then you have to, um, you have to get a postcard mailed to your address. And then, then on that postcard is like a code that you go back into Google business listing and you put this code in. And then once the code's in, you have to finish the entire Google business listing. So uh, let me see, let me look up like, uh, let me see, let me see if I can figure this out. I'm not sure. Miss Lillian's. Yeah, Miss Lillian's self storage is the name of our facilities. And um, so, like, if you click on Miss Lillian's, right? So, to fill all this out, like, to fill out um, this one actually we just bought. I think we just closed on it. We closed on two of them, but let's see which one. Maybe one that's like we've had for a while. This one right here. Yeah. So, this one here is. Um, Miscellaneous self storage. It's got seven reviews, and then uh, you can let's see if I can manage my business profile. I'm not sure. I can show y'all what it looks like. But it, what you do is you go on to Google Business Listings. You fill it out. They're going to have all these questions. Like you have to fill all this information out. Is what you do. And uh, it's really honestly like super. It's time consuming and it's like not easy. It's really not easy to do that uh, for, especially for somebody that's like 60, 70, 80, 90, you know, 80 or 90 years old. I'm going to tell you that they are not going to fill this stuff out. They're not going to get on to their computer and they're not going to go and sit and try to figure out how to figure out how to do Google business listings. So we target, we personally target storage facility owners that are like, you know, that have owned their storage facilities for 20, 30 or 40 years. And, uh, and, then, um, and then we find what I call the hidden market, which is like the storage facilities that are, on, that are not on Google Maps, all right? 
and uh, and you could do that by going to Google Maps. Let me see Google Maps, and then you do exactly the same way that we're doing it, except for you're not you're you're not searching for storage. You're essentially just driving for storage. You're virtually driving for storage, and you're looking for facilities. So. Let me see, Nazareth, yeah, I think Nazareth was here. Yeah, so I remember we found a storage facility that was not on Google Maps. Yeah, and let me see if I could see if I could find it now. And I think it was right around the corner. Is this where it's at? Yeah, I think it was like right here. And I'll just show you, and you can kind of tell, you can, once you start looking virtually for storage, you can kind of tell um, what they look like. Let's see. This one is here. Here's Nazareth self storage, and then um, this is this is in Nazareth, um, Pennsylvania. I know I found the storage facility right around kind of this area, but I have to see if I can find it again. Or so I'm not sure. Um, but you see how I'm kind of just looking, and I'm just kind of looking for commercial property because I'm going to tell you there are many, many storage facilities that are not on Google Maps because the owners, they just don't want to figure out how to get on Google Maps. They just don't, All right? So we actually target these, we target, we target the ones that are not on Google Maps and that's how we find all of our facilities. How do you, how do you usually find yours? Is it just on, is it like just going directly to the owners, Chris, like you said, or how are you actually finding them? Yeah, more than anything, the ones that we've purchased as well as as the ones that we've lined up are um they're all very similar to what you described typically an older owner um someone who's lost interest someone who just you know they're still operating like it's 1984 mm -hmm. and um you know i've just made it a, a point to to drop in get to meet them um because being in sales, I'm already out driving through those areas anyway. Okay, good. Awesome. And so if I'm out and about, um, you know, I find facilities all the time that I didn't know they were there. And frankly, outside of the people who live within a, you know, three, four, five mile radius or frequently travel that road, most people, you know, someone outside of that little, that little area wouldn't even know it was available. So that's been my experience. I've had a lot of success with it. And uh, like I said, we've, um, we've got several more that are lined up to purchase over the next, uh, you know, really, um, we've got, I guess, eight lined up over the next five to seven years that we've already had conversations with. Now, that's not to say that someone won't come along and, and, you know, offer them a considerable amount more than, then frankly, it's worth, but um, I'm sure we, you know, you know the market uh, better than I do. But oh, are you uh, saying like they're going to sell within the next eight years and you're going to buy them or what? Yes. Oh, right. okay. Well, that's that's kind of a long that's a long time to look out there. Well, but it's one of those things where if someone's telling me they're planning to sell within the next five years, it's just my job to keep in touch with them while I'm looking for others. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's hard for me to feel like to think that's that far away in five years. Who knows what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> Uh, I'm buying or building one a year for at least the next seven years for sure. Oh, you are? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. So, uh, so our goal is like our goal personally is to travel the world. And uh, so like we, we actually, what we do is um, we just, we make sure that that we could do that really you know so we yeah. live in an R we live in an rv and travel full time now and then like you know so like yeah so us for us personally and it's not about like owning like a you know, hundred million dollars in, in storage for us it's really like you know how much time can we spend together as a family so um that's kind of what we do so like yeah we have 12 we're, we're buying our 12th facility right now and, uh, and I was just on the, it was so funny because I was on at the stupid driving around with the students and um, like one of my students, Kaylee, she's like, how many storage facilities do you want? I mean, my God, Stacy. And I was like, I don't know, whatever, like, as you know, as long as we feel like buying storage facilities, we'll buy them. And then, it's, and then eventually when we feel like selling, we'll just sell them, you know, because for me personally, storage is a means to an end. That's it. 
you know it's not about holding on to these things forever for me it's just not my thing now a, a lot of students like i have a lot of students that are just like oh no i'm gonna 1031 exchange that thing every single time until i have like you know a 20 million dollar facility or whatever right but for us no for us we're, we're definitely not going to do that so like there's a difference between you just have to you just keep that in mind there's a difference between like an investment and a business and so for us personally storage investing is not a business it's an investment it's an investment in, in our future and then like spending time with the family and and just being able to um you know hand something maybe may if she wants it hand something off to our daughter and uh, you know, for her to be, you know, for her to be taken care of when we leave. But um, but yeah, we spend a lot of time together, and we uh we travel in our RV most of the time, and um, and just kind of hang out, and that's really what's most important for us. And you said your goal is to buy like to build and buy as many storage facilities as you can. Yeah, the goal is um, we'll turn my wife and I will both turn fifty five in um, uh, the next eight years. And so my goal- And y'all are like right at the same age as we are then. Okay. And mm -hmm. so the, the whole thing for us is 55 has been kind of the age where um, I've had that age as a, a goal for quite some time that that would be at the point where, for lack of a better way of saying it, and this is where storage comes in, it's just buying our life back. Um, you know, the goal is not mm -hmm. for me to own- you know, a certain number of facilities or other businesses as far as that goes, but it's really to, it's nothing more than to provide the income so that we can travel as we want. Um, and, and as our kids um, graduate, you know, get out, get through high school or, or even into high school, because they're, they're in elementary and middle school now, but mm -hmm. as they get through high school and if they go to college or whatever they choose to do, it's really to, to position ourselves so that you know, we're not in, in a scenario that we're in our late 60s or, or 70s trying to figure out how to, to go and travel and do a lot of the things that we want to do, yeah. uh, you know, and so it's, uh, it's a simple means to an end for us. It's, I like storage better than I do a lot of the other, uh, you know, investment uh, real estate that's out there. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's been good to us. Are you using like what what software are you using to run your uh, facilities? So bigger facilities, we're using ESS. Um, with the um, our smaller facilities, we're actually and when I say small, I'm talking like you know less than fifty units right now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, all I'm doing with those, I'm literally running them with a uh, a Google Docs spreadsheet and mm -hmm. uh, and a, a virtual terminal uh, that you know we have through our credit card processing. And, um, you know, quite honestly, those are the easiest ones to run yeah. uh, because everything is so stinking simple. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, but like I said, you know, we've got um, some, a majority of our facilities are on the smaller side. And so it's been something that was, it was low, uh, a low entry point. Um, and thankfully we started when we did because good grief, the way that the REITs have drawn the prices up, it's, uh, uh, I know. Well, I mean, especially like in price. So primary markets are primary markets are like four to six caps right now. I mean, and then ter like secondary markets are like, I have a lot of second, like secondary market is like six to eight cap, but like six to seven is like a typical cap rate for a secondary market mm -hmm. on the sell side. And then on the, and so we buy mostly in the tertiary markets. It's like secondary to tertiary markets. But what we do is we buy mismanaged facilities. Uh, are y'all buying, is that what y'all are buying? Or are you buying like income producing? You know, we've done both. We've the, done both. Um, in so reality. What you like better? Well, I, uh, I used to say I like fixing, I do like fixing problems. I shouldn't say that. I enjoy fixing problems. I don't enjoy having to, um, to clean up the messes. Like, like one of our facilities, our newest purchase, um, that one has, um, it's given me some gray hair and it's really got more to do just with the, the incompetence of the previous owner. It's not incompetence, actually. The guy was a crook and we just didn't figure that out until after we took over the facility and, and learned more about where things are. But uh, Which, where's I, that one at? It's in Tennessee. Oh, and, okay. Uh, but, but from, from my standpoint, um, you know, the diamonds in the rough typically are going to, there's, there's a reason why you know, we're, you're buying a facility that, and, and literally 
getting a um, an appraisal as you're going through the purchase, and you're getting an appraisal that's two hundred thousand more than you're paying. There's a reason it's selling for what it's selling for. So, um, you know, yeah. we we've been willing to put the work in and and uh, and invest the money that needs to be invested to to bring it up to scale. And and um, you know, given the choice, well, I haven't had one that that I could tell you was was perfect as far as the income producing, but we've had, like I said, a mix and, and really now that I've gone through as well, and we're still going through it, uh, the process with this one, you know, getting things where they need to be. One of the things I keep, um, focusing on is, you know, the upside is so huge that maybe I'm willing to take on more of these in the future, just because there is so much added value with them. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, essentially, if you have like, because we have like, we have around like 1300 doors right now. Wow. And it's getting to be like, it's going to be, uh, I mean, it's not my husband is just like, no, you're not buying anymore, Stacey. And then I just talked to what I just talked to somebody today who was like, hey, I got 116 units for sale. And I was like, Pete, we got another one. He's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, so like we are once you so the, the way it works is like, the first couple hundred are like the first couple hundred you can handle yourself. I mean, it's yep. really, it's really not a lot of work for a couple hundred storage facility. This actually, this, I was going to show you this one right here that you see on the screen. This, it, this is almost 700 units right here. Isn't that crazy? And uh, it's, uh, it's actually not even on the maps. Like there's nothing like when you search, I search storage and there's like no like storage. There's no like here, this one is on the map. This one is not even on the map. The owner, so we went by and took took a look at this one, and this is the this is one of the ones where the owner's just like super duper old. He's had this thing forever. It's a hundred percent full, you know. It's just like it is what it is, and like he's there. He said there's no reason to even get on Google Maps or have a website or anything. Right. Right. So there are storage facilities out there just like this one that, um, you know, that you could get out there and buy as well, too. And you can get these things. I mean, I don't pay any more than five thousand dollars a door for my storage facilities. I'm super duper. Uh, I'm super picky on my doors, I mean, on my uh, on my price, because uh, I want to get the you know, I want to get the um, highest possible cap rate I can and then sell it for the lowest cap rate I can, you know, so. Sure. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we did, so this one is like over seven, I think it's like 732 units. Now we're picking up another one right now in Texas, it's 737 units. And we got that for $3.5 million. It comes out to $5,000 a door. So um, when you go directly to the owner, you should be able to get that price. You know, you should be able to be around $5,000 a door. Um, you know, so just keep that in mind because I'm seeing like the most ridiculous prices right now. I just looked at one that was 162 units and it was $11,000 a door and it was on like Crexy or LoopNet or something like this. Right. It's like 11,000 a door. I would never even pay that much money for that. You know, now I would sell it for that, you know, but I would never pay that much. And they already have offers. It's a $1.8 million facility and they have offers for, they have one offer for 1.6, the, the, the realtor had said. So so people are paying ridiculous money on the ridiculous money on the sell side, but if you go directly to the owner, even on facilities like these, you should be able to get this uh, for you know you should be able to get stuff like this for five thousand dollars a door. And I know because I see my students picking them up all the time at these prices, and I'm and I'm also getting them at this price as well too. So so just keep that in mind when you do talk to the owners, like. You know, a lot of owners, you know, a lot of owners, they really, you know, they don't really know how much their facilities are valued at. And when a broker gets involved, and you know this, when a, when a realtor or a broker gets involved, all they do is just screw the whole deal up, you know, so go directly to the owner and talk to them and shoot for the stars is what I'm saying. Shoot for the stars. Typically, my facilities that I buy are between two and three thousand dollars a door. And I don't go any higher than five thousand dollars a door. Yeah, we we try to to keep it in in a very similar range, and a lot of it just depends on you know the circumstances. Um, you know, for example, one of our properties that we purchased, we bought it 
not because of what it currently had, but because it had the room to expand. Um, it was already full and uh, the sellers, the sellers had to sell. So it was a good time for us, but, um, but we paid a little bit more than frankly we could have, but we did it because we were able to get creative with financing. Um, well, they, they were willing to carry um, oh, some good. Of, of that. Yeah, so they own so, and financed it. Yeah, they, and when they were doing that, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, I want to pay a little bit more for that. I'll, I'll do that. But really yeah. it was the, it was the ability to, um, to go in and, and add uh, actually almost double the number of units at that facility. And, and like I said, from our standpoint, that suddenly opened up a lot of other doors in that market. But, um, but yeah, I have seen some, some facilities recently, just, I, I look at the, the pricing and I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm happy for them to be able to sell at that price. I also look at it as I am astonished that someone would pay that price. Um, you know, maybe it's just, well, in most cases, I'm sure it's a REIT that's doing it, but it's just like, it's, it's astounding to me. Uh, I actually saw one sell not too long ago and uh, it was almost 14,000 the doors, what it equal or uh, averaged out to. And I, know. Yeah, I, I was just, too. I was dumbfounded. And, and this is for us, this is a, you know, this is purely just um, the side gig, if you will. You know, um, I had no desire to own apartments or rental houses and have to deal with you know, phone calls about broken toilets at 2 a.m. in the morning or taking 90 to 120 days to, to get someone out. Um, so for me, you know, self-storage is just an easy way to, to be in the, the real estate game, but not have a lot of the complications that go with some of the other types yeah. of investments out there. It's true. It's very true. I, the reason that I like self-storage so much and storage facilities so much is because it really, for the amount of money that you make, the work is very, very minimal. So yep. um, yeah, but you have to automate and systematize everything. You have to be able to do like now when the smaller facilities, they do, they don't take a lot of work. But once you start getting past, I would say like 200 to 250 doors, I don't know how many doors you have. You really want to start automating everything and you know get it to where you know it's hands off as much as possible because and just lay that foundation lay that foundation because um otherwise um then like later you're just like okay now like this is getting to be way out of hand and stuff too so luckily we did we we, we use store edges what we use is our software and uh a lot of people you know say a lot of people complain about storage but the truth of the matter is is like any software that you get no matter what there's going to be like a learning curve and once you actually learn how to utilize storage i love storage because you can automate everything everything is completely virtual and automated so from the moment they come to our website all the way through putting them in and then even the auction process now is completely automated and um and you know all the locks and everything and the codes and everything so it's like you don't have to do anything anymore it's all completely virtual yep it's awesome yeah that's that's one of the things that we did with it when um when we started using ess one of the things that really jumped out to me was i'd done everything literally i was doing everything um myself but I, I did that because I wanted to learn about the industry mm -hmm. and I wanted to understand it better. And, you know, I'm sure there's, there's tons of people, uh, of, of different, you know, coaches or, or, uh, there's lots of resources where you can learn about the industry, but I'm, I'm wanted to be hands-on just so I could understand it. So it all made sense. And, um, then when, once we made the decision to start, expanding and, and adding new facilities, you know, obviously it's, it's just not something that I had any desire to do all on my own, because like I said, I don't know the businesses too. And so, um, well, we, part of the reason that we chose ESS was because they did have the, uh, the call center option. And, um, yeah. you know, we're, we're working through that process right now. Um, I'm a big fan of automation and anything that, that if it's an option, I want to do it. Um, and it's working very well. We actually, uh, at one facility I talked to, I have a, 
I have some folks that help me as um, I guess you could call them managers, um, but really they're they're just keeping an eye on things for me. And so one of the things that we did today at one of our facilities was we actually went live uh, for the first time with the, the gate automation today. Um, so we just got a, you know, it was an older facility, a manual gate, um, you know, just all the headaches that go with that. And so we've rolled out the ESS um, with online option for rentals. We've done the same thing, like I said, with the call center. We're getting success there. Uh, we got the business. We actually got the Google business listing corrected. It had the wrong phone number on it. Oh, okay, um, yeah. And so they hadn't had, they'd never had a rental from, from Google because a, a competitor had claimed the listing and, you know, just botched the phone number on purpose, of course. And so, you know, we, between the Google business listing, giving uh, renters the ability to uh, rent 24 seven through the website, having a call center where you've got people that can answer the phone from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Yes. All those have been really well. Now that we've added the, the gate automation that will help out, um, you know, with any of the lockouts and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. It'll also help a lot because now as each of these renters are having to call in to get a code, one of the very first things that we're doing or the call center is doing for us, they're updating all their contact information. They're making sure that they sign off on a new uh, copy of our lease, not the previous owner's lease. Um, we're, encouraging everyone to go from paying by cash or check or money order or whatever to uh, obviously I own a processing company. So, you know, we, we want everyone paying by credit cards because I want to dictate when we get paid, not have our renter. Do yeah. That. See, we don't take any tenants that don't that pay cash or check. We just, oh, we, don't either. we only take credit card. That's it. If yeah. you don't want to pay on credit card, then we don't want you as a tenant. That's, that's what we do. And, uh, and, you know, um, it's so funny because I, I've had sellers, of facilities tell me, oh my gosh, you're insane. You're going to lose all your customers. I'm like, you know what? If someone's not willing to put a credit card or debit card on file, there's a reason for that. And so it is what it is. If they're willing to, you know, I don't want to lose renters, of course, not if they're good renters, but at the same time, if they're not willing to put a card on file and they would rather, you know, pack up their belongings and move it to another storage facility, you know, I hate to see them go, but at the same card. time. There's no, there's no storages that don't take st storage facilities that don't take card anymore. Yeah, well, the thing is, so I I have found a lot of the mom and pops, they're still big on, on checks and everything, but a lot of that's because that's how they've always done business. And frankly, one, some of the mom and pops that I've, I've spoken with, they don't want credit cards. They want, they encourage cash because they, they want to hide the income. Oh yeah. And yeah, uh, but then they can't ever sell it for what it's worth. That's exactly right. And that's the yeah. conversation we've had. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so hopefully you don't manage them this way. You know, you need you need to be able to sell your portfolio in you know later in life. So you oh, want to make sure that you're managing everything completely part pro properly. Absolutely. No, we're we're running everything, like I said, we want everyone paying by card. Um, we're doing it, we're doing it the right way not just for now, but for the future, whether our yeah. kids ever decide to be involved with it or, or we, you know, we sell the properties one at a time or we sell the entire portfolio. You know, as you said, I don't even know what I'm, where I'll be five years from now. Yeah. But one of the things I've learned from being in sales all these years is it's just smart to, to have a pipeline. And so, yeah. you know, when I'm, when I'm talking to someone who's telling me that, you know, they're 65 and they're going to sell when they're 70, you know what, they're, they're in my contacts list and there's somebody that I'll exactly. touch base with. From Keep time following to time. up and, with them. Yeah. And, and I mean, the property we just closed on in August, that property, when I spoke to the, the previous owner a year ago, mm -hmm. he wasn't ready to sell. When I dropped in in March to check in on him, suddenly um, I, I, there's a, a six foot for sale by owner sign sitting in his office. And I'm like, where did that come from? What's going on? And he's like, well, um, I think I'm going to sell the place. I was like, why didn't you call me? And he goes, well, I forgot about you. But uh, I said, well, what, what well, are you doing? I always, we send, we send, le we send letters out on a quarterly basis. Oh, that's a great idea. So you need to be sending letters out. And we, so what we do is we have like a master spreadsheet and then like, we're always touching them. You know, we're always sending out letters. We're texting, we're emailing. 
and just reminding them that reminding them that we're on we're here and ready to buy whenever they're and at the bottom of the at the bottom of the letter it's like a letter it's like hey this is stacy rossetti we're very interested in buying your storage facility um you know if you're interested just give us a call and then it says like if you're not interested now just hold on to this because when you're interested i'll be ready yep Right. So just start sending that out. And I just, when I talk to the phone, to the owners and they're like, no, I'm not ready to sell. And it's like, okay, well, can I, can I just send you a letter with my contact information and you can put it in your file? Cause they always have files and you put it in your file and just keep your file, keep that file and then keep it in your file and then just pull it out whenever you're ready to sell. Yep. I like the idea a lot. Yeah. And I do that with, it's so funny. I, I've, uh, I've never really thought about it. Um, you know, but in the majority of the cases, at least with the people I talk to, and it sounds like these, it's a lot of the same ones that you would deal with. Um, they're older folks. So like a postcard, you know, uh, something coming in the mail is what they're accustomed to where, you know, you and I probably, you know, email, we don't get things by mail. We get an email, we get texts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so actually we do all of them. Okay. We do all of them. So we'll mail, it will text and we'll email them. Good deal. And then we'll and then we'll even even our offers are mailed to are mailed texted and, and emailed. We do video offers. I do a video where I do it. I'm like, hey, this is Stacy Rosetti. I just want to tell you I'm a real person, you know, and I do like a little video. I call it video negotiations, what I call. And I'll send a little video of myself, like if I'm going to send an offer over, because I have an acquisitions person now. So essentially Chris goes out and like looks for all the facilities. And then like, we just put an offer in like $1.2 million facility. And I just send over a quick little video introduction of myself. It's like, hey, Chris is out there. He's the one, he's our acquisitions person, but I'm a real person. Just so you know, I will be buying your facility. You know, something like this is what we do too. So you can always do that as well and give it a try. You never know. The thing is, is like nowadays, there's so many different ways of commuting and communicating with people and you have no idea what their one way is. Right. Right. You know, so like we just do all of it. Smart. I like it. Yeah, we do all of it. So um, yeah, so we do uh, like, so we, we got really good at kind of uh, managing that. Another thing that you could do too, I think that'd be really good, this is for all of everybody that's here, is um, start looking up, um, start looking up cities by population in the areas that you wanna be in. Right. Okay? And then, you know, be in areas that are, I don't know, if you want secondary, if you want tertiary, whatever your price range is for your facility. So if it's like less than a million dollars, it's probably going to be tertiary. More than a million dollars is probably going to be secondary, right? And so in the tertiary markets, um, a tertiary market would be like a town of, let's say, 30,000 or less outside of the metro areas of cities. Maybe right. like 25,000 or less or something like this. And then like towns that are like 10, like maybe five to 15,000 in the areas that you want to be in, right? So you can also search by, I, I showed you how to do Google Maps and look on Google Maps and drive virtually for, for, for uh, deals. You can also, we, we look by population. Oh. And, uh, and then, so we'll just scan towns of population of 10,000 or five to 15,000. And then we target everybody in those towns. Okay. Call them. It's a good idea. So that'd be really good as well too. You could do that. And, uh, and then when you call up and talk to them, you know, you just like, you know, you just, you just have to be normal. You just, you know, don't like, Hey, I'm interested in buying your storage, you know, like if you, you know, but you just say like, look, you know, I'm, this is like, I'm Stacey Rossetti and I'm just, you have to be vulnerable. Like, I just want you to, you know, we, you know, we're looking to buy our first facility, our next facility. And uh, we have really honestly no idea what we're doing. I want to be honest, but um, like, we're just calling around. This is something that we really want to do. And, uh, you know, we're just calling around all the owners and just, you know, in this town, because I have like family in this town and just seeing if we want to sell. You know, and the more vulnerable you are with these types of people, the more likely they're going to connect with you because storage facility owners are the least motivated owner of all properties in the world, I think. <laughs> Why would you want to sell your storage facility? It's like a cash cow and you don't have to do that much work for it. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? So I think they're they're probably the lead, one of the least motivated owners out there. So what they want to do is they want to know, like, and trust you. That's really what it is. And, and they are an unmotivated seller. So the only way to get them to sell is by truly connecting with them on whatever it is. So when you're talking to them, you want to find out something about them that you can connect with, or you can even like Google them, right? right? You can search them and search who the owner is and say, oh, he is the owner of X, Y, and Z. Like I see he likes whatever fishing or whatever, you know, you just figure out something, some way that you can connect with them. It's kind of, it sounds kind of creepy, but in the end, like this is, this is like one of the best ways to get them to, uh, to really kind of start talking to you. Right. Yep. Uh, because that's the one thing they wanted. That's what the one thing is that this is their bread and butter. This is something that they've had that this is what's paying their bills, you know? So it's like, well, who, you know, most of them say, oh, I'm just going to, you know, give it to my family, you know, like I'm just going to, I'm going to give it to my son. And, I'm, and I always ask like, does he want it? <laughs> that's a good point. Do you really want it? Or are you just going to give it to him because that's what you, you know, you just, that's what you think, you know, wouldn't it be better just to sell him and give him cash if he doesn't really want to run the thing, you know, yeah. or something. So I always say stuff like that, you know, so try to come up with something that's like, you know, and you want to like, you want to come up with stuff that's not typical because guess what? Everybody, all storage facility owners are getting calls about people, you know, from people that want to buy their storage. You know, so you got to stick out like a sore thumb somehow. So come up with some ways to, st to stick outside the box and do not talk to office managers. You want to talk only to the owners because office managers, all they're going to tell you is no, he doesn't want to sell. Oh, no, I had that come up. Actually, uh, I reached out to I found out about a facility being for sale. And so I did my typical I'm going to drop by. Um, unfortunately, you know, with COVID, it's kind of changed things a little bit. And so. I was a little surprised when they had their office closed because frankly, in my area, that's not that big of a deal. Um, or that's not that common, it's a better way to say it. And so I was a little surprised that it was closed, and I closed off and I was like, okay, well, let's do this then. Um, and so my thought was, I'm just gonna give them a call, let them know I'm here. And then, you know, they're gonna be like, oh, hey, just give us a second and we'll be right there. Instead, the owner, wasn't available, but the manager was. And so when I mentioned something about, you know, being interested in, um, you know, talking to the owner about possibly buying the facility since it was for sale, I'm the guy that ended up telling the manager that the facility was for sale. And I felt horrible about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the, the people who were trying to buy it, well, multiple people were trying to buy it. That's how I learned about it. And so, um, you know, obviously it was being talked about in lots of circles online, even it just so happened that I'm the guy that, you know, had that conversation and felt horrible about it. So, yeah, so. yeah, you don't want to talk to the, you don't really want to talk to the owner. Now my office manager, Bonnie, I told her, I was like, if anybody ever calls and says they're interested in buying any of our storage facilities, give that, give, tell that person to call me. Yeah. Right. So, cause like, who knows what they're going to offer? Yep. You no, know, they can offer like, they can offer a six cap for all my, you know, 10 cap facilities I have, you know? So, um, so I always tell Bonnie, she's very good at that. If anybody ever says they want to buy the facility, she just passes that information over, but actually most or office managers are not, I'm not like this. And so what I do, like if, if an office manager answers the phone when I'm calling, then what I do is um, I just ask them, like, I just pretend I'm going to be a tenant. And then I start gathering information about that facility. So, oh, you know, like, oh, yeah, do you have any available? What sizes do you have available? Oh, I have, the, I may need a small one, but I'm not sure I may need a big one. What's your prices? Like, you know, are you full? Are you not full? Do you have some availability? And I really start just gathering, like, intel. So, Thanks. and then, and then I'll just skip trace and try to find the owner. And then I'll, I'll skip trace and, and call the owner and get the, get the owner's information and call them. And I love skip tracing too. And there's nothing wrong with skip tracing because when you get the owner's information, then essentially like you'll get like all their information for the past 10 years, including even email addresses. So there's phone numbers and emails and address and everything. Hmm. And we'll just call every single one of them. And we'll call, one of those numbers will always be, either a family member or the owner and we'll just talk to them cool 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so listen, I think those are some good tips. And like I said, hop on any time for this because now you have all these. So if you need any help with like management or like how do I do this or that, I'll be here for you. You know, you can ask me whatever you want on like, you know, you have so many. So I feel like, how many doors do you have so far? We're just uh, at 200. Between oh, 200. The, okay, so yeah. you're, so the, yeah, there's so small you're, facilities. you're on the cusp, cusp now of the next level. Yeah. which is like maybe a part-time person to kind of answer the phones. How much do you pay for um, ESS to answer your phones? We pay, uh, I think if I remember correctly, and this is terrible, I don't know it, but I'm actually out of town, so I'm going off of memory. Um, I believe I'm just under $600 a month, and that is yeah. for, um, that's for them answering the phones, the software, of course, and, and, um, and, they provide the website as part of the of the the um, the software package, but I'm also paying them. Um, I believe 160 of that is for um, SEO, and I don't really know software that I'm going to continue your, that. Your website and stuff like yeah. that, back office and everything. Yeah, so yeah. you're paying around 600 dollars. About like. that, yes. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, you're getting to the point now. Like I said, if you buy another facility, 100 units, then it's like, okay, well, I need to start thinking about this. Yep. Oh yeah. And I mean, the goal is, is, um, you know, it's a hundred percent to do everything that I can to, um, you know, to automate each process because there's no way to scale it if you don't. Um, and, and Lord knows I'm not looking for any more, you know, jobs, if you will, I'm looking to, you know, make sure that I've got everything in place so that I can get, um, you know, I can, I can expand and, um, you know, and own the facilities without, you know, those facilities dominating my time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What we did is we got rid of like storage. We use storage for the back office and we pay like whatever it is per month that we pay mm -hmm. for each of our facilities. Cause you know, they start charging you per facility. Right. For ESS and storage. And that, that stuff starts adding up. Yep. You know, and so we just got rid of the website. We had our own website made. Okay. Did you get through storage bug or did you do something else? No, uh -uh. we just had like a guy make our website. Okay. And then now we don't have that. We don't have that, um, that expense because, you know, we have like 10, 11, 12, we had like 10 facilities at one time. Now we have like 12, but like, um, you know, so now it's like, it was coming out to like a thousand dollars a month for just the facility, like just the website and then another thousand for the back office. Right. It's like thousands and thousands of dollars a month. And we were like, we have got to figure this out. There's no reason every single facility they want to add. Now I get that for maybe the property management side, but not for the website. Cause all you're doing is adding another page. Yep. I agree. So like start thinking about that as too, because if you do have a website and you have all those different pages and they start, you know, for all your facilities and then they start like charging you for that, then you should really just consider getting a website made and then use in, in, in connecting that and getting your back office managed through like ESS. And you could totally yeah. do that. Yeah. And we've done that for the other facilities that, that we're not using ESS. The biggest thing or reason I wanted to give this a shot was I really wanted to see um, I wanted to know from like with ESS, the website's free. It's part of the deal. Um, I mean, if you have their software, then you, you automatically, well, you have to pay. It's not the website, but it's like the SEO and stuff. Oh yeah. The SEO. Yeah. And, well, but one of the things that we just did, um, is I just got, um, I got access to all the, anal the Google analytics. So that opens up the door for me to be able to see oh, what good. they're yeah, doing yeah. and then I can manipulate it with with what I think are better fits. And yeah, um, yeah I think that might make a big difference. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's what I said. Once you start getting into a lot of facilities, like you got to start thinking about stuff like that because otherwise you're just gonna, it's just gonna cost way too much money to run that thing, those things. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, cool, good, awesome. Well, I'm glad that you're doing, you know, you're doing so well. Hopefully I gave you some tips and tricks on how to find some more facilities and yep. hop on anytime. Any, I'm here every month, you know, hop on if you have like management questions or anything like that or as well, you know, and then we could always like just talk it out and see if there's a different way to do stuff for you. Sounds great. Thanks so much. Okay, cool. All right, Terry and Mark, thank you for hopping on. I hope I gave y'all some ideas as well too on getting out there. I was going to ask you, uh, go ahead, Terry, were you going to say something? I was just going to comment that, that this is great. It's like a seminar, just listening to you guys. Yeah. 
yeah, this is what we do for, for my session. We just come in and I just talk to everybody. Whatever your challenge is, whatever your need, wherever you're located, I'll just tell you exactly what you should be doing, focusing on. And uh, yeah, and then Mark, what about you? How was your trip? Did you go to Florida or no? Hi, Stacy. Uh, no, I'm still stuck in Maryland. Um, uh, okay, I make fun of the place, uh, yeah. Maryland. <laughs> have you been out to drive for storage at all yet? No, I have not been out driving. Um, my uh, some family issues were taken care of, but um, I, I got to uh, get on it. Yeah, get out there and just drive around. I took like I had like twelve students I took out on Saturday, and we drove around in Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. And I took them out. I, we found like abandoned warehouse that was like would be perfect for a conversion because, you know, in that area, there's so many abandoned warehouses and stuff. And um, and there's definitely not enough storage in that area. There's so many people in that area and there's just not enough storage. And actually, I really feel like there's not there's not even a lot a lot of businesses. I think maybe it's too expensive or something. I'm not sure. But well, part of you, you, it, we're in Pennsylvania. It was over in um, it was over near uh, uh, Easton and Bethlehem. OK, is where we were. And we spent the whole day driving around and we went we found abandoned warehouses. We found um, we found truck parking. There's a whole piece of property where somebody was like parking big rigs. And I was like, this is the perfect piece of property to buy and then like fence it in and then just do some boat and RV parking it was already zoned for parking. You know, so I mean, that was a great deal. Um, we went and we looked at a lot of storage facilities that like really like horrible uh, reviews. And then we went to like, there's another, there was another one that um, there was an, uh, there was an owner that has like, I think probably 10 or 12 facilities in New York and then like, like up in the New York area and then kind of in Pennsylvania, uh, sorry, in Philadelphia. And then he has this like one random storage facility just like way out of the way from everything else. And I'm thinking to myself like, what a horrible facility to have to handle, you know, because it's like you got your boots on the ground, pay people in New York handling your your portfolio over there and managing those, and you got your boots on the ground, people managing your Philadelphia stuff, and you have like five or six here and five or six there, and then you got this one random one that's like two hours away from anything that you do, you know. So think about that when you look at them. If there are storage facility owners out there that own ten or twelve facilities, they always got that one. That's like the one where they're like, "I sure as hell should have never bought this damn thing." Right. right. So keep your eye on those as well too, and that's one of the ones that we went to as well and looked at that. It was kind of out of the way, but I wanted to go check it out and just look at it. So um, we looked at so many awesome different types of facilities. So and all we did, all I did was virtually drive for storage look for storage facilities and, and actually what i say to my students is driving for storage equals market research that's all it is so we, we got out we really looked around what is the what is the storage facility market for that area what does it look like and we spent the whole day trying to figure that out that's what you got to do okay 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 all right, cool. All right, so I will be here next month. If you need anything, I'll see you then. Happy, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever it is for y'all. Okay. And you. Okay. Thank you. All take right. Care. Take care. Nice, nice to meet y'all. Bye. Bye now.